Hello and welcome to the 11th part of our Invaders style classic video game tutorial video. Uh, in this part, this is actually part A, there are two different part 11s. In this part A, we're going to be talking about how to create a countdown timer. So that's saying that maybe you only have 15 seconds to complete the game and if you run out of time, you lose. In part B, we talk about how to just have a general timer that keeps track of your time and actually displays your time on the windscreen. So it says you won in 17 seconds or whatever it is. So it just keeps track of how long it took you to kind of a, kind of like a, a best score type of thing. But in this one, part A, we're talking about a countdown timer. So let's start with a couple variables. Uh, processing actually has an internal clock. But in order to use that internal clock, we need to make a variable associated with it. So we're going to call that our total time. So that's going to be equal to the entire clock, which we'll start in a moment. So right now it's not actually equal to anything. And we need to have multiple timers because when we start our game, we actually start on the splash screen. So then when we enter our game, it's going to display your time here. But if you don't have multiple timers, it's actually going to display the amount of time that you're on your splash screen and the amount of time that you're in your game. So we're going to add a couple other timers here. We're going to add a timer for splash. So this is going to be splash time. We're going to add a variable for game time. And then we're going to add a variable for time limit. And this is going to be how long your player has to play your game. Let's just say 10. So that's going to be 10 seconds. OK? Now, let's scroll down to our draw function. We just have to start our timer. So this is going to be start clock and that's going to be total time is equal to millis which is the internal clock function then let's scroll down to our splash time or our splash screen start clock splash time is going to be equal to total time so that's going to keep track of how long or how long we're on our splash time. Now let's go down to our game function. Stop splash time and start game time. So when we start our game function, splash time is now going to be equal to splash time. That's actually going to splash or stop the splash timer. So it's going to save how much time you're actually on the splash time. Then Game time, actually we'll do this later. Let's actually, instead of doing this all the way up here, let's scroll down a little bit. Let's go down to the bottom of our game, right before our exiting stages here. Or actually right before our status bar, because we're going to be printing our clock on our status bar. So let's actually do this right before our status bar. And let's just say game time function. So splash time equals splash time. This is stop splash timer to save amount of time we are on splash okay then we need to actually start the game timer but the game timer isn't just going to be equal to the total time the game time is actually going to be equal to the total time subtracting the amount of time we we're on splash so that means that game time is equal to total time minus splash time okay we're gonna have to modify that a little bit but let's go ahead and actually just add and print the, uh, the the timer here on our status bar so I'm just going to copy some of this code let's just say that this is score this is timer okay let's say right here we're going to put your time or just time and let's move this all the way over to the other side of the screen so let's say like 510 or so and then right here we're going to print game time at say 570 so when we start our game we're not going to see anything but let's stay on the splash screen for a while oops looks like i spelled something wrong here uh, line 145, let's see what I did. Uh, 145, 
Oops, you do not need any of those brackets. Just total time like so. So we press play. We wait a couple seconds. And we're looking at a lot of numbers. Now the reason we're looking at this is because uh, we actually need, we're looking at milliseconds here. So we want to convert our time to seconds, which of course is divided by a thousand. So if we actually say total time minus splash time divided by 1,000, display game time in seconds. Let's see if that works. Looks like we have seconds here, but we have a lot of decimals. We really just want the first integer, not this whole string of numbers. So we're gonna convert this to an integer. So we're gonna now type int parenthesis and then a parenthesis after the 1,000. So it's int parenthesis parenthesis. That converts this to just be a single integer. Then it's total time minus splash time, which finds out just the amount of time that we're on our game. And then it's divided by 1,000 to actually convert that to be seconds. Let's try that again. Perfect. That's now keeping track of how long we're on our game timer. We want it to be counting down, counting down. So where we actually display our game time, we're going to say display uh, time limit minus game time. Display count down timer. Press play. Beautiful. Now, what happens when we run out of time? Well, right now, nothing's going to happen because we actually haven't said stop the game or enter you lose. It's just going to keep going into the negatives. So, we need to create a stage and a you lose function for when you actually lose your game. So, let's go up to our global. We're going to set our, where do we have our stages here? We're going to add another stage. I'm just going to add a comment up in global. Stage three is now going to be lose. Let's go to draw. If stage equals equals three, we're going to run a function called lose. All right. And let's actually copy and paste our, uh, our, our you win function. So let's find our function win. Let's just copy this whole thing and paste it and let's just change it to lose. I'm gonna make the background red for the you lose screen, zero comma zero, that's red. Uh, we're gonna say here words for lose. Let's say, uh, say game over. Now we actually have to initiate this stage to happen. So let's scroll down to our stage changes, our exiting stages here in draw. I'm just going to say if game time is greater than or equal to time limit, which right now is set to 10 seconds, stage equals three, and then I don't think we have a lose sound yet, but let's add a lose sound dot play. Okay, so first let's just see if that works. I'm going to comment out lose sound real quick. Let's start our game here. And let's wait our 10 seconds to see if we get to our game over screen. Perfect. Now let's just make a lose sound a thing. So let's go up to global and add a variable called lose sound, bar lose sound. I already have a sound uploaded from our multimedia tutorial earlier on, so I'm gonna scroll down to preload, and we're gonna say that lose sound is equal to load sound, and I'm just gonna open up my files menu here to see what the name is called of the file, 8-bit underscore lose, so 8-bit underscore lose dot m4a, Let's give this a shot. Two seconds. There we go. Now, if you ever find that that's not enough time, you can always scroll up here and simply change your time limit 
to another number. If we change that to 20, now when we press play, we'll have 20 seconds to play again. If you're interested in doing a counting up timer that just keeps track of how long you've been playing for, check out Space Invaders Part 11-B for the other timer style.